uh, and t computer. <coughs> and uh, oh. hey, welcome back, everyone. Today we are going to be writing our first assembly language program. So that's pretty exciting. But before we can even talk about writing an assembly language program, we need to talk about something else that is critical to understanding anything with regards to doing assembly language programming, which is Z80 registers. So what is a Z80 register? Well, if you watched the video on 8-bit computer architecture, then you'll understand that the Z80, first of all, is the microprocessor chip that's inside the Sinclair Spectrum computer, or essentially the ZX Spectrum Next computer as well. And registers are essentially tiny memory locations inside the Z80 microprocessor chip. Now we learned about actual memory chips and how they are used to store data, and we can think of Z80 registers pretty much in the same way. They are essentially memory locations located physically inside the Z80 microprocessor chip and we can use those registers to store data. Now, the advantage of using registers is that they operate very quickly. We can use them to do extremely fast calculations and manipulations of data by transferring values from the regular computer memory chips into the Z80 registers, and then doing calculations on them, manipulating them, and putting them back into the regular computer memory. But before we get into the registers, I want to read a little bit from some other of my old book collections that I have here. And first I'm going to read from this one, an introduction to Z80 machine code. And it says, the terms machine code and assembly language seem to cause a certain amount of confusion, as there seems to be a general belief that they are different terms for the same thing. In fact, they are very similar, but there is an important difference. Now I'm not going to read this book's description of that important difference because it's a bit too technical and complicated for what we need to understand. So I'm going to switch over to this book. Z80 and 8080 assembly language programming. And it says here on page five with all the cool little diagrams, the job of the assembly language programmer, the programmer now, not the program, the job of the assembly language programmer is to know how the instructions can do the job he needs done and to write the instruction mnemonics. Remember we discussed mnemonics, which is just another term for the assembly language instructions that we're going to be using. So the job of the assembly language programmer is to know how the instructions can do the job he needs done and to write the instruction mnemonics. So essentially creating the Z80 assembly language program, which makes sense. That's what the programmer would do. The job of the assembler program is to translate the mnemonics into machine code. So we'll be using uh, an assembler to write our assembly language programs. And as this book states, the job of the assembler program is to translate the mnemonics into machine code. So the assembler is going to translate our assembly language program into machine code, which we did an introduction to in our last video where we actually created a machine code program manually, which was pretty cool. And finally, I want to read this last part, which says the job of the computer is to execute the machine code instructions. So we talked about in a previous video how the computer can only execute machine code. It doesn't understand basic or assembly language. And that's what this book says as well. So before we can actually start programming in Z80 assembly language, we need to really understand about Z80 registers because they're going to be used intensively. Well, they're pretty much all that we use when programming in Z80 assembly language is registers and memory locations and manipulating data back and forth between computer memory and Z80 registers in order to get the data to do what we need it to do. So I think some people probably find registers very easy to understand and they have no problem understanding what they are and how they work and how we can use them. And other people might not find it so easy to understand what registers are and how they work. And that's understandable because they're not really as easy as they appear. So essentially, as I just mentioned, Z80 registers are tiny memory locations that can store data inside the Z80 microprocessor chip itself, similarly to how a memory chip would store data. 
but these memory locations, like I said, are actually physically inside the Z80 microprocessor chip. Now there are some interesting things that we need to know and need to understand about Z80 registers. And I'm going to describe to you in a moment what the different registers are, and there aren't that many of them. So we'll see that it's going to be quite interesting to create our Z80 assembly language programs and get it to do what we want it to do using such a small selection of registers to work with. But first I'm going to read to you a description of the different registers just as an introduction without going into them into too much detail. So I'm going to go back to this book, An Introduction to Z80 Machine Code. And this is a very old book, but as you probably know by now, I love old books, particularly ones that have information that I can use. So this book, when it starts describing about the registers, it says, and I'm going to read this kind of as a reference for you that you can watch this part again if you want to, and I'll put up an image on the screen that actually shows you the registers, which are on page six of this book, right there. So I'll just read the description now. It says the registers of the Z80A, and the Z80A is just a newer revision of the Z80 microprocessor chip. The registers of the Z80A are shown in diagrammatic form in figure one, which I'll show you. And the ones of main interest to the programmer are the accumulator, also known as the A register, the flag, which is the F register, the six general purpose registers, which are B, C, D, E, H and L registers, and the IX plus IY index registers. The A, F, B, C, D, E, H and L registers are in fact all duplicated in the alternative register set, but only one set at a time can be used, with instructions being included to enable the programmer to switch from one set to the other as desired. These are 8-bit registers apart from the IX and IY index registers which are 16-bit types. However, as indicated, the BC, DE, and HL registers are paired together and can operate effectively as 16-bit registers. The accumulator and flag registers also operate together, but not in the same way as the other register pairs. So that's just a general introduction and description of the different registers. It doesn't really explain in too much detail how they work and what they do. I'm going to be creating separate videos for explaining in more detail how the registers work after I learn how they work. But what I think is important for us to know about registers is that there are some aspects to them which can make it complicated and maybe a bit difficult to understand what they do and how they work and how we can think of them. So if you're not familiar with Z80 registers already, let me offer a few suggestions as to how you might be able to understand them if you relate them to other terms you might already be familiar with. For example, we just discussed how registers can be thought of as tiny memory locations and it, which is how they do work, you store values into them, and each individual register can store an 8-bit value, which is equivalent to one byte, which is exactly how a normal memory location works. They can store one byte values. However, registers are a bit different in that they can be combined together, some of them. So that's a bit different than how memory locations work. Some of these registers can be combined into pairs, and others can't. Now, the registers also have unique functions, some of them. So unlike regular computer memory, which only has one function, which is to store a byte of data where you can load a value into memory and retrieve a value out of memory, that is all that a normal memory location in a regular memory chip can do, which is store one byte of data. However, Z80 registers operate a bit differently. For example, the A register, which is also known as the accumulator register, is the main register that we use for doing most of our calculations and manipulations in our assembly language programs. And a lot of the calculations and manipulations require the A register to be involved. Another register, the F register, is also known as the flag register. And this one operates uniquely because it can be broken down into its individual bits. And each bit can tell us something useful about certain aspects of how the program is operating. For example, one of the bit is used to determine whether the result of a calculation was negative. Another bit might determine whether the result of a calculation caused an overflow and certain things like that. So the flag register is unique in that we are interested in the individual bits within that register, as opposed to the value of the entire register as a whole. Now there are some other registers as well, such as the PC register, 
and the specific function of this register is to store the address in memory of the machine code instruction that's being executed. Now remember in our last video where we manually entered these machine code instructions into memory locations, so now we can understand more about how that works and why that's important for us to understand because, for example, the program counter keeps track of those specific memory locations or specifically the memory location that is storing the machine code instruction that's being executed. Now, if you see from this diagram, there are a few other registers that are listed here that are of interest to us as well. One is the interrupt vector register known as the I register. There's a refresh register, which is labeled as R, and there's a stack pointer register labeled as SP. Now we're going to be discussing in an upcoming video about the stack specifically, and the stack, just to give you a brief introduction, is another unique area in memory where values can be stored. And the stack operates in a unique kind of way where you push values onto it and you pop values off of it in kind of a last in first out scenario. But as you can see, the Z80 has a register specifically intended to keep track of the stack. So you can see that the registers inside a Z80 processor have interesting and specific functions that differentiate them from normal memory locations in regular memory chips, which have only one function, which is to store one byte of data, whereas the Z80 registers can store either one byte of data, or some of them can be paired up with other registers to store a 16-bit value or two bytes of data, and they also have their unique functions as well. And we'll see when we actually get into programming our Z80 assembly language program, how different assembly language instructions can only be used with certain of the Z80 registers. And we need to know which registers are associated with which assembly language instructions so that we can get our program to do what we need it to do. So that's one way to think of Z80 registers is to think of them in comparison to memory locations, which can store bytes of data, which they can, but keeping in mind that they also have specific purposes. Another way you can think of Z80 registers is if you're familiar with basic variables, which is somewhat similar to algebra where you have letters that are used to represent numeric values. For example, in basic, as we saw in our last video, we used a variable x to store a numeric value. And so when you store a numeric value into a numeric variable, then you can use that variable in calculations and manipulations. And Z80 registers can also kind of be thought as variables in a way because they can also be used in place of numeric values and they can be used in calculations and manipulations. For example, you can manipulate the bits of the byte which are stored inside the registers, and we can do other calculations with registers as well, such as incrementing them, adding registers together, subtracting values from registers, decrementing them, and doing conditional checks on them. And so there's all kinds of fun and cool and neat things that we can do with registers that we can't do with just normal basic variables, or for sure not with normal memory address locations.